and the ex-premium Dr. Mahathir. The media in Malaysia, mainly through a combination of restrictive laws and political party ownership, were extremely predict predictable in their election coverage. On the whole, both press and broadcasting were blatantly propagandistic, openly supporting the BN parties and either demonizing, belittling, or ignoring altogether the opposition parties and their messages or manifestos. But for many, the 2008 elections perhaps signaled the turning point, the coming of age of the internet media. Former Premier Abdullah Mabadawi, after the death had settled and the election results were announced, talked about the loss of the internet, of the internet war. Other commentators, too, have discussed and written about this aspect to business as usual. Of course, we have also had the historic speech of 15 September 2011 by Prime Minister Najib, a speech which for some has actually become nothing more than history. In his speech, he announced his intention to, quote, his intention to repeal the long-criticized Internal Security Act and various other outdated and repressive legislation, unquote. In the context of this discussion, Najib also announced that the Printing Presses and Publications Act, PPPA, and the Freedom of Assembly laws would be reviewed. But of course, as goes from Lay saying, Chakap that's a good weekend. For instance, under the 1984 Printing Presses Publications Act, regular publications needed to have a license which needed to be reviewed annually. The PPPA Amendment Bill, which was passed by Parliament in April this year, supposedly changes all that. Indeed with, it, indeed, with this amendment, regular publications no longer need to get a yearly license. But, ironically and ominously, the license held may be revoked at any time. Circumstances such as this, emerging as they do just before the 13 general elections, enjoin us to be vigilant and continue to scrutinize the workings of the Malaysian media at this time. The media we have seen time and again play a pivotal role in providing messages, and meanings to the wider population. This is true of the media in Malaysia as it is for the media in other countries. And lest we forget, even one of the eight demands of Bursay, the Coalition for Free and Fair Elections, is free and ex fair access to media. To make this monitoring project even more crucial, just last week, on 7 June, the Information, Communications and Culture Minister, Dr. Sri Dr. Rais Yatim, declared that once parliament is dissolved and the election commission announces the campaigning period, political parties will be allowed to promote their manifestos on RTM and other broadcasters. So for the first time in living, in living memory, the opposition has been, is being provided airtime, on RTM at least, to supposedly promote their manifestos. But of course, let us remember that this is after all Malaysia where all habits die hard and genuine transformation evidently becomes harder still. Indeed, we're making this declaration of the impending openness of the broadcast media leading up to the general elections, Rais also qualified his promise. For him, quote, the bottom line is that the facility has to be structured and based on the concept of the nation's broadcasting se sector. He also added ominously that as a government broadcaster, RTM has to give priority to broadcasts related to the government and issues of importance to the people. Vague statements of this nature and the fact that Rais, quote, did not state how much airtime would be given or the conditions that parties had to comply with to, to access the facility, unquote, do make us cautious about this opening up of the media to all parties concerned. Indeed, firstly, why are the guidelines government imposed at that being provided only at the beginning of the campaign period without any discussion with the interested and affected parties. Second, will all parties be given equal time in the same time slots? It would make a mockery of the facility if, for instance, the opposition coalition and other non-Barisan national parties are provided time slots to promote their manifestos that have small audiences, minimum reach. Hence, for us on the project, it is clear that all these make critical, systematic, media monitoring necessary in order for us to develop a model that can be used even for others to gauge media coverage of elections. More than that, more than developing best practices for such monitoring, we believe this project will help to systematically and in a balanced manner evaluate the role played by much of the Malaysian media in the practice of democracy. Thank you.